a chair. It's a chair. <laughs> oh, but look, Kathy's been working today. Oh, look, a finished block. Wow, <gasps> so prepared. I decided that I was not going to be caught like I was yesterday. Oh, you want to know what you're doing this time? Uh, I thought it'd be fun. Look, there's the girl behind Hi. the camera. There we are. Hello. Hey, Barb. Hey, Barb. Didn't we just see you over here? Hi, Julie. Hello, everybody. Hi, Janet. Oh, you saw Janet, too. Oh, yeah, I know. We Hi, see, again. We see, I know. We see you guys. Oh, look at that stain in the ceiling. That's not very pretty. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. that. Uh-oh. <laughs> Let's go back to the quilt. Oh, that's so pretty. So very pretty. Hi, Marsha. We just gadding about. Gadding about. Just a gad about. Here's our, our studio from the week. Oh, I spy the whole collection of these fabrics. I don't know if your plan was to, to show these later, I but I just saw them. No, I think they're good to show now. And yeah. the other thing is I should have brought back some of the, um, it has companions. So this is all like watermarking. It's called um, Library of Rarities. And it has mm. like butterfly. It has a bunch of other cool prints with it, but I do really, really love very this print. Let me gorgeous. bring that green and give her a little more viewing. There. I like the green. That's my style. I know. They are really beautiful. And there's there's the pumpkin. Several of you yesterday asked if we were going to do kits of the pumpkin, and I thought that we would do ones that look more along these lines, um, not along what I did yesterday, because my little block is not nearly as cute as their little block. Um, so it will, the kits, um, we are gonna do some. They won't be ready till next week because we haven't even started yet. I know four of my people have already asked and they are on the list. I told them, you know, that I got their order. But if anyone is, else is interested in a kit of the mini pumpkins, we are putting those together. So get your orders in. Here comes Joyce, yay! Oh, we got our clamp. This is like the whole week of blocks back here. It's so cool. I know it is. Everything we've done. We've had, we've had a week of learning, and we're not done. We are not done. So today's project, I'm not sure if we're going to get all the way through this today or if we're going to spread it over two days. I thought I'd see how far we got today. Marsha and Barb Anthony both want pumpkin kits. I, so, I yeah, get your like, orders in. I know. I was like, we might as well just cut them all at once. It'll be a one and done. So nobody else will know that we're doing this kit. It's our little secret. So um, for those of you that want it, though, just let us know. And we'll cut a few and have them ready. And the Constance fabric back and we, when we very first started, very, very first started, um, we did the beautiful Abbey Rose. I did get those fabrics back in stock. So I actually think we can make – there's a couple of you still waiting on those kits. And um, – so I'll get those put back together as well. So they're on their way. Okay, so what's yes. up today? Oh my, and th things that are on order, we are calling when they come in. Yes, okay, we owe you a call actually. A couple things came in. You're on my list. Yes, <laughs> and we found, we think we found um, another supplier, the Martelli Mat, <gasps> so we can get those in sooner than our usual distributor. Our girl Jane is back and she's been sleuthing for us and uh, she's very resourceful. So she always finds what we're looking for. So a lot of you, we have a lot of you on order for the Martelli mats. No fear, it's coming very soon. So today, wedding ring. we're gonna tackle the wedding ring. And just like yesterday where I had never made one of those pumpkin blocks before, until today, I have never made one of these wedding ring blocks before. So I decided I was not gonna get cut short like I did yesterday, caught short like I did yesterday. So I actually made a block just to make sure I could. It looks beautiful. Yeah, it turned out pretty cool. There is a lot of trimming with this technique. Um, things don't square up. When you take curves, when you put raw curves together and then you sew them, they sew together nicely, but they don't keep anything square. Everything kind of pushes out, the curve pushes out. And the fabric is very forgiving, um, and it does look really cute. Isn't that cute? Mm -hmm. oh, I love those colors. They're so girly. I don't know. I just really like them. So I thought I would start at the very beginning today, and we talked about sewing strips together. I'm going to do a little bit of straight sewing for you, and then I'm going to show you how to cut the curve. The patterns are very specific about how our quick curve ruler gets attached and lined up to the various pieces of our puzzle. So we're gonna walk through each of the puzzle pieces and how we line up and cut for those pieces. And then I thought I would sew a wedge together for you guys um, so you can see how that all goes together. And if I don't take too long, we might get the whole block done today. And if not, we'll finish it up tomorrow. 
So the first thing I wanted to start with is just the strip sets. So this is based on a two and a half inch, so you can start with a jelly roll, gives a really nice variety. Um, I'm only gonna make a pillow, so I only need four arcs to make one circle. Um, so I did not need um, a whole jelly roll. And I'm just gonna make my arcs all the same five fabrics. So I like to have them have some contrast between them. So if you get um, five fabrics, I would get two of one color and three of the other and then just segregate them. You don't want um, um, super high contrast when you're doing because the dark one, whatever's the dark one is gonna really pop out. So this pink is a little bit um, darker than the others, but these two are pretty strong with it. So I have two that are lighter and three that are um, a little more medium. And then for my corners, I decided I might put this yellow in. I can't, I can't decide if I like the yellow or not, but I definitely love this pink as my corners, which is my darkest one. And I might do yellow with it. There's a little touch of yellow in this one and in this. Um, I still haven't decided. I love the pink on the edge though, but I'm still, still debating. Mm. I'm not sure I'm loving that. I think it needs to stay on the aqua family or a, another pink, so we'll see. All right, so how it has you start is you start with your jelly roll and you pick five fabrics and we wanna line them up together. And I've been doing a lot of curved, pee -pee, curved piecing without pinning anything. And I just wanna show you how I sew strips together as well because some of you aren't as advanced as others. And I think it's helpful to see how do I line it up and keep my seam allowance really, really even. Because if we don't get these square to start, everything just keeps falling away from that, so. No one likes the yellow. Okay, the, I'm with you. I know yeah. when I brought it, when I, when I got my block done and then I just put it against it, I didn't like it either. So sometimes we cut our fabric and then we decide we really don't like it. All right, so when I have two strips that I wanna to sew together, um, actually if I fold this, well, I'll just add this one on. Okay. Um, so I, again, I don't worry about what's going on at the back end. And I should turn my light off, shouldn't I? It's better for those guys when I sew in the dark. Oh, yeah. Let me just turn my light off. And yes, and we do still have elastic. Um, so we're still working down our list and calling on elastic. But if you're not on the list, just give us a call. We do have some extra. Yep. Okay, so when I go to put my strips together, um, what happens with a lot of people is the bottom strip starts working its way under and pretty soon it's way over here and you don't even notice it as you're sewing and then when you sew, your backside looks like that. So we wanna make sure that our bottom piece is not slipping further and further underneath our top piece. So the way I do it is again, I don't try and line up the whole thing all the way down, I just let it hang. I only worry about what's entering the machine. And I have to tell you, I am in a privileged position right now because I'm sitting at a koala cabinet with everything level and flat. So I have this long leading deck going into my machine, which makes it a lot easier to keep things squared up and even and not shifting on you. Okay, so, um, but even if you have at least your extension table or a so steady table around you, anything that gives you a, a wider workspace when you're feeding strips in is going to help you stay more accurate and it's going to keep you from paying attention to just what's going on at the needle. If you only watch where the needle is, you're too late because your, your needle may be over here and you need to be over here. So you got to be watching how you're feeding your fabric in and keeping it nice and square coming into the machine. Okay, so I'm gonna just get my two, and I always just kind of separate them. I, put, I use a finger in between just so I can see what's happening with my lower piece. And then I just put them together, and I bring my foot down, and then I start sewing, and I only worry, I'm not pulling, I'm not pushing behind, I'm not doing anything, I let the machine do all the work, but I'm just looking and making sure I can just barely see my bottom piece sticking out, and I bring it over. And then when I do that part, I come back and do the last, a little bit more. And this then could I, be a white noise machine. Yeah, it is. It's very sleep. soothing. I love the sound of that machine. It's a lot faster than sewing a curve, I'll tell you that much. Oh, and Joyce is at the ready. I love you, Miss Joyce. Yes. Ready to press. Okay, so Joyce, these all need to press in the same direction. Okay. And so, um, the light this time. yeah, so no, when, it well, it's, it's going up okay. this way. Um, all of your seams for this particular project need to go the same way. So I don't know if you do this, Joyce, I but do. when I, I you always put whatever, yeah, whatever direction, when you want to tell them how you do it. Yep. 
So when if you want to press towards, like I want to press towards the light, this pink right here, so then I'm going to keep the pink on top. And then if you set your stitches like this, for instance, when you turn and press, then you are going to have that seam pressed to the pink. That easy. So it's a good habit to get into. Right. So I'm yeah, pressing. I always do that. I get very confused if the mm -hmm. if I try and push towards me, I always have to push right. away. Right. Right. Yeah. So Look putting it on top, it always is. makes the seam go the right direction. Yep. Just like that. Beautiful. Awesome. And then I want to line these up the same as I did this, which means that the pink. Yes. Okay. Right? And it's all going. Yes, it's all going the same direction. All right. And then I'm going to do it one more time. I'm just going to line up my outside edge. Um, and the reason why I sewed some of these seams for you so you didn't have to watch me sew all of them. But I want you to see what my starting cuts are. Because how you start the, um, the strip set is part of the deal. One more. As I said, I just go a little bit at a time until that area is done. And I keep making sure that I just see my underneath area. I can just see my underneath. Don't want that strip sliding ahead underneath. Here we go. And one last press. Thank you, Miss right. Joyce. One last press. And so I'm still going to go in this direction. No, I mean, so I need to press. Let's see. Where are we going? Yeah, we're going to go towards the pink. So we're going to do it that way. So you'll notice that it's not completely even on either side. And that's because not all fabrics are exactly the same um, width. And also because um, the salvages, look how big this salvage is. So the salvages aren't e either. So don't be alarmed. No alarm. No, we'll cut worry. that off. Yeah, that's what the ruler is for. I do love these fabric choices. They're so pretty. Yes. Really, they match my chair. I, I got a know. new chair. I got it so when um, Pure One. Pure One, when yeah. Pure One was going out of business, which made me very sad. Um, Joyce and I went over to get some fixtures. They had some clear acrylic fixtures, and we were just looking to see if they had anything we could bring into the store. And there was a chair there, it was a girly chair, um, that one of the employees had set back. It had just come in, it was brand new, it just set back. And then she had held it for like a week or two and decided she didn't want it. It was marked down to like $159. And it's these colors, and I want to make a little pillow to go with it. So that's what's going on with this. Um, but that was so my, I got so excited that day. I know. All right, so here's how we're going to cut. So here is our, this is the pattern we're using today. It's Metro Rings, and Metro Rings calls for a jelly roll to get started, and then a background fabric, and then the two cornerstones that you want for your connectors for your wedding ring. There's also a mini version, so for those of you who got the QCR mini, there's a mini version, and this one actually starts with layer cakes, and you cut the layers, you start with 10 inch strips instead of jelly rolls. And this is a six inch, finish, six inch finished block, this is a 10 inch finished block. So um, either ruler has a pattern that makes basically the same pattern. Do you like mini or do you like a regular size? Okay. Um, all right, so inside the instructions, she gives you lots of layouts of how you take this ruler and position it on your strip sets to get you started. And then we're gonna cut multiple strips from, or arcs from the same strip set. So here is my strip set. And the first thing she says is that your strip set should be 10 inches wide. Well, when you um, piece together two and a half inch strips, you end up with a half inch extra. So you have to actually trim your two sides down to get them back to 10 inches. So first thing I'm gonna do is just take my strip set and a long ruler. I'm just gonna lay them between um, two lines and you want to cut equally off of this side and this side because you don't want to have one strip a lot shorter and the other strip longer. This will just center um, the difference between the two. So I'm going to cut some off this side. I'm not being, um, and I'm just using the mat lines to tell me where to cut. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Actually, there's no line down here. Let me turn this around so I'm on the solid side. There we go. Okay. So there is my starting size for my strip set width. Then um, she tells you in the pattern, 
And you really do have to keep these patterns with you because the ruler is lined up differently for every different piece of fabric and it's really hard to keep those numbers in your head. So you don't want to just go like, oh, this one, she always starts on three. She doesn't always start on three. Sometimes it's on two, sometimes it's three and a half, sometimes it's four and three quarters. So you've got to read which line you're on. So right now we're looking at the three and a half mark. So she tells me to take my three and a half mark. Um, I'm going to line my, so we are centering my strip set between the, the one line and the one and the 11, which is a 10 inch strip. And then I'm gonna take my three and a half mark, which is this one right here, and put it along the, um, the, so it's across all the bottom edge. And this is just a cleaning cut, so I'm not worried that it's all jagged because this part, when I cut it out, is gonna be discarded. So she's just getting us started on our strip set. And I'm gonna use my 45 in here. Always trying to avoid that glare, ladies. So that's why I keep moving the camera around. Okay, so there's our first cut. Then she says, if you look at this ruler, there are dash lines and hole lines. And depending on what you're doing and what pattern you're working with, she's gonna have you line things up differently depending. For this one, we're using the dashed line. So I'm gonna keep always keep the one and the 10 on the two sides. And then I'm gonna just line that dashed line up. So this dashed line is gonna go right along the cut that I just did. And I'm gonna come and cut again. Look, I'm actually cutting today. Isn't that impressive? Did you replace that blade? I did not. Oh! <laughs> I thought about it, but I'm only going through one, one layer. layer. I'm one only layer. going through one layer. Okay, so I'm gonna just line up one more time and show you one more time. So I'm gonna put my one inch line here, my 11 inch line here, and then my arc along the bottom of what I just cut. And because I'm only cutting one layer, um, it's cutting quite nicely. And I would go all the way up my strip set. So this is what forms all my wedges. If I were making a big quilt like this one and I started with a strip set, I would have 14 different sets of these. So I'd get all different combinations of my arc. So you can see they're all different fabrics going on in here which is a lot of fun as well. Mine are all gonna be the same, which would be, I mean, they're all gonna look like this, which is a really nice pleasing. The good thing about it too, is that it reverses them. So um, you have one going this way and then it loops around and comes back up. So you have, you know, the fabrics aren't up against each other or opposite, they are cattywampus, which I think is, I think it's very pleasing. So there you have it. Okay, so there's that. So that's cutting our arcs. So we would wanna cut out however many arcs she has us do for our project. See how much better it is? Actually, it's probably a lot more boring today because I actually read the pattern and know what I'm supposed to do, and I just did it right before class. So I'm, and you're successfully cutting. I'm it's... cutting. I'm not. I'm not jamming the machine. I haven't done anything too quirky no yet. No bloopers yet. Of course, we're not done yet. No, that's we're not true. Done yet. Okay. So, um, so that's cutting out all my arcs. The next thing we need to do is we need to cut out our background pieces, which are going to be our inside here and our outside here. She has a start with, I don't remember what size square it was, a nine and a half or 10 inch square, and just cut it once on the diagonal. Okay, so I just cut that. That's how I started with this shape here. And then we need to get them all stacked back up nice and neat. I like how I shuffle my fabric. Does that mean you're gonna cut through many layers again? I'm gonna cut through four layers. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm going to cut through four layers. Cross your fingers. <laughs> All right, but I'm going to look at my chart again because, the, again, the lineup is different with every single cut, and you want to make sure that you are matching her picture. So she has you put your triangle here going this way, and I'm going to put the, um, the four, the five-inch, okay, the five-inch line is right here. I want it to be pointing towards my tip here. Okay, so I'm gonna go right there. And then she says, put your five inch line of your ruler, which is this one, along your bottom edge. So this is in the center. This is along the bottom edge and I'm gonna just trim this side. I'm gonna flip it around. Oh, you should have been using this. Oh! <laughs> Especially because we could actually get them so we can sell some more. <laughs> Oh, I forgot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that way you wouldn't have had a I know how much you love ironing with that. But I can iron by, I, I share. 
I'll show you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so same thing. My five line is gonna come into the point of my um, triangle. I've already clipped this edge, so that's my 10 inch line. So I'm gonna clip my other edge, which is the other 10 inch line. So that's gonna give me 10 inches, that's my shape. Once I have that shape, I actually need to still cut the arc out of it because I need to be able to set it into my ring. So I need to know where to cut this arc. So the next instruction, is to have my unit like this and to put my arc here. And I want, let me just look real quick. The face of studying. Three inch, I, yeah, I have to study because it's a lot. Okay, <laughs> I want my three inch line on the, um, I want my three inch just line three inch. on my, is this right? Three inch line, I do have to study. And then the one inch and the one inch, okay. That's right, okay, that makes sense. I couldn't understand why this wasn't lining up my sides because I wasn't lined up. You gotta line up between the one and the 11, which is my 10 inches, and then I cut them over three inches, and now I'm gonna cut my arc. Oh! So close, so close. <laughs> I definitely need to play, change that blade. <laughs> I, <laughs> all right, now we're getting into Kathy's old tricks. Hey, <laughs> knock it off. All right, uh, Carol. Let, <laughs> Carol, let us know if you want the the regular size or the little one. Okay, so there is our shape. So that would be a very difficult shape to cut out without this ruler. Um, but that's going to be our shape for our outside edges. And then she has us cut uh, rectangles as well. And these are for our inside. So this is actually two pieces sewn together. You see that they're sewn together. Um, after I make my two halves. So I need to cut out this little melon as well. And for that melon, I use my one inch line, one inch vertical. <laughs> I know, I have to pay attention. I come up and I do. I always try to get a flattering angle, but sometimes it's hard. <laughs> uh, one inch, I think it's one inch from there. Let me make sure. Dun, da, da, dun. Yep, I'm reading the instruction the same both times. All right. Let's see, two and three quarters position on the one and 11 and sits under the one inch. Oh, that sits under the one inch. There we go. Okay, I want this one inch line to be along my top and then this to be, so she's really specific. She'll say like your top edge needs to be on the one inch line and these two need to be here to get yourself lined up because you can see if I cut it here versus here or here, I'm gonna end up with different shapes. So I wanna get exactly the shapes gonna work with her pattern and it is right here. It's not hard, you just have to read the instructions. Okay, so here are my pieces. Let's see if they're the same that I cut earlier. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> okay, so now these are all my outsides and my insides, and here are my wedges. So if you can imagine, these are my pieces. Okay? Looks like a house. I know, it's pretty Looks easy. Like okay, so from here, I'm just going to take one of these, one of these, and one of these. I'm going to come back to my sewing machine. And she has you put the inside arch in first, and she has you lay this down um, because the L is the longer part. It's the, it's the, I don't know, it's the, it's the outside. This is the inside. So the inside is what's gonna come on top. And she has me start down about a quarter inch. And these are not gonna be square when I finish. There are, there are a couple of stages of squaring up during this process. So I'm just gonna start like I have every other time with my curve, letting them go wild and crazy. And then I'm just gonna work an inch or two at a time, bringing them back. I'm not pulling on them, I'm just easing them together. You don't wanna be pulling on them because it's all bias. You just wanna just ease them together so that they nest nicely. And again, you can't sew as fast as you can when you're doing strip piecing. I know my left hand really likes to rise up. It's hard to keep the viewing area. And for this, she doesn't have you press between the two seams. She has you sew both seams and then press to the piece that does not have the seams in it. So in just a minute, I'll do the other side and then I'll hand it to Joyce for pressing. So 
So here's my one piece. And Beautiful. See how it just sits right in. Beautiful. And the sides are not going to match up because um, they, the, the nature of this ruler is you just continue to keep re-squaring. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to start, she tells you to start down about a quarter inch. So I'm going to start down, take it over, get started sewing, keeping the, the L on the bottom. I'm bringing the other curve in. Just a few stitches at a time. Keep lining it up. You're so talented sewing in the dark. I'm so impressed. I'm telling you what, it's really dark underneath this needle. I know it, you guys can see the light, but it's, um, I like having my bright light when I'm sewing. It's our old age eyes, right? <laughs> it's like your headlight. You can see where you're going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Don't want to flip my seam. All right. And Joyce, while you, so you're gonna press it both to the background. All righty. So, and it will be whopper jawed. And I'm gonna go ahead and sew okay. another one while she presses, because right. we need two pieces. We'll come admire the pressing technique. Pressing, pressing, so pretty. I it could spin pretty. it. <laughs> Only because I can. There you go, there's that. Oh, you, you know what, I did these all back. Oh, well. Uh-oh. Doesn't matter. Are you making <laughs> things up as you go along? Mm -hmm. She I, says, uh, uh oh. I told you to press everything towards the top, but then when I did my slices, I put the the other fabric on the bottom. So the, do they still go to the background? It's still fine. Carry on. Sure? It's no fine. No one will know. Only me. <laughs> and everyone you just told. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've got. Well, you these are going to be opposite. These are going to flow opposite in the wedge oh, than so the other ones matter. because I didn't um, flip my seams when I cut it. It's all right. Don't listen to me. I'm just babbling. Should be fine. <laughs> Watch Joyce. She's the one no, who knows what she's doing right she's now. She's the professional. Professional presser. Yes, with his lovely iron. I know. We've gotten some really happy people with that iron. I know. Yes. There are a few that are like, wow, why did I not know about this until now? I think now? Libby was one. She yeah. said, how did I ever live without this you iron? You can't. You can't. Okay. It's going to feel, it is kind of whoppy, wonky, right. but it's going to, it's going to whopper jaw right back up. All right. Let me come back over here and show off this fabric real quick. We still have, this is some of our leftover batiks um, from the Drunkard's Path Day, if you all remember the Drunkard's Path Day. Um, and we have layer cakes, jelly rolls, yardage, all that good stuff. Fat quarters. Sewing hard. Sure love to iron up, uh, I was gonna say, Joyce, this is your happy place. Okay. And it's so, this, this iron just glides over your yes. fabric. Yeah, so and nice. the iron and the mat are both 129. Yes. Yes. And if you're a Buzz Club, you get 10% off. Yes, 10% off all Buzz Club people. <laughs> I really will really wonder how you ever lived without it. So now, what are you doing? Okay, so I was gonna show them that next. So see how it it is. It will flatten down. It is flat, but see how screwy it is? See, every edge is, is coming out and bowing in. That is the nature of sewing curves that don't have seam allowance included. So our Drunkard's Path and our AccuQuilt Go all have the seam allowance already included in the templates. So when you sew them together, they lay flat and there's no trimming up to be done. When you sew curves that are a single cut and both sides marry together, you'll always have irregular edges and you always have to re-square up. So don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Don't be alarmed. Don't panic. Don't panic. There will be no panic. Okay, so this is ultimately going to come down to nine and a half inches, and she wants us to leave a quarter. She wants the four and three quarters, since we want, if you think nine and a half inches top to bottom, half of that is nine and three quarters. That's where we want our tip to be, and then we want an eighth of a seam allowance on here. Let me bring that tip down. And we want an eighth of a seam allowance down at nine and a half. There's my nine and a half inch tick. And this black line right there is what I'm lining up on the seam allowance. And then I'm gonna trim these two sides. And then I'm gonna turn it. Put the um, nine and a half inch line on my bottom and the straight line here. And I'm gonna trim this side. So you can see everything gets back to square. And there we go, we're getting back to square. Mm -hmm. This outside edge will also get trimmed in a minute. And then let me go ahead and do this one too. Thank you, Miss Joyce. You're welcome. 
So we're gonna do that again. We're gonna put the four and three quarters coming out at our tip. Another way to get it flat is to smack your ruler down on it like Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna put an eighth of an inch at nine and a half and an eighth of an inch up here at the top. So there is an eighth at that arc and an eighth of an inch at my nine and a half inch arc. And I'm gonna cut again, this and this, and then I'm gonna rotate it. Line up, my, line up my nine and a half inch line and my four inch line and cut across the top. Boop. And there are my two halves. So now we're ready to put my two halves together. Ba -ba -da That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. A deep teal would look pretty with your other opposing fabric too, don't you think? Has your two oh, I think a deep teal uh, would be pretty, yeah. Be pretty. Think, better than yellow. Mm -hmm. Deep teal would be better than yellow. Okay, so there is a lot of chunkiness in this seam right here when I'm going to go enter my machine. And this is the kind of position uh, situation where it causes your machine to not want to feed because it can't kind of grab that bulk when you're just getting started and it may jam when you're starting. So to prevent that, we talked about the other day that you can just use a starter cloth. So I'm going to just do a starter cloth. Now, the reason I know that this might jam when you stitch it is because when I stitched my test one, it did. So now I'm prepared for you to tell you how to avoid that because I don't want you seeing me do that. So I just want you to know it does happen. And when it does, here's an easy solution. Just get a little tusk piece of fabric that can start. And then when you have that really bulky area that you're putting in, it's ready to go. It's ready to go. And the whoop, I let a gap go, but go. There we go. I shouldn't have let that big gap in there, but even so, there we go. Um, but it gives you something to help pull from the backside to get up over that initial bulk when you have a lot of seam allowances like you do here. It doesn't care nearly as much when it's sewing off those bulks. Now this one, Miss Joyce, it does want it to be pressed, pressed open. open. I saw that, all right. Thank you, so, whoops. You, you might want to flip my tail off. Let me just throw it over my shoulder. Oh. <laughs> Snip that away, but you want to save this for the next one. Yes, and you just right. reuse the same piece over and over again. All right, so when I press open a seam, I usually like to get it started. And that's where I love the point yes, of that iron. Yes, because it will force that it open. Iron really walks down those seams It really does, look nicely. at that. It's just saying, let's just glide down the middle. Let's see that point? It just goes right down the center of your seam and just makes it go in the direction you want it to go. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Nice. All right. Make sure you're on. Okay. All right. Here we go. Next. All right. So we're almost done with our block. We just need to do one more um, squaring up function. Actually, we're going to sew our two corners on, and then we're going to do a final square up. So since I don't know what I want my alternating corner to be yet, I know that I need more of these. So I'm just going to I'm going to be safe and just put this on again. It's so cute. So these two are just going to go on my two corners. Whenever we line up things that actually are intended to fit, you want to have that dog ear where you sew in the V, so across your quarter inch and out the V. So that's what I'm gonna be aiming for. I've got two short seams, we're gonna square up our block. I think we're gonna make it to the end. I know. Oh so my what, golly. So did she tell you, I'm sorry, I missed that. Did she tell you to cut um, it just a half square triangle? This was just a half square triangle, yes. And she did give you the size and the pattern and then you just cut your square in half. Three and, what is that, five eighths. Three and five eighths, yeah. Mm -hmm. You just do whatever the pattern said for that. Nothing fancy for that piece. So I go in the V and out the V, and it doesn't really matter that um, these are on perfectly either because there's one more squaring up function that we need to do, um, and then we will have our finished block. Mm. So close, can you see how close we are? Can you feel it? I can mm. feel it. In the home stretch. I am. We have half your pillow done. I know. That's true. Wow. Face Facebook Live makes you very productive. You I, never I, sew I this much. Close we have a lot of dealer friends across the country, and I was talking to one the other night, and she says, do you ever sew other than at 3 o'clock every afternoon? And I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> this is my sewing time, so thank you for getting me in front of a sewing machine. Lisa wants to know if it's possible to start in the middle and sew out to those bulky edges. Uh, but then your quarter inch would go yeah, the other direction, maybe. I would rather have a starter cloth, um, but you could. You could start in the middle, I suppose. Oh, look, look at my pop. Da, 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 da. 
So I just want to show you when I lay it down though, it's not going to be square. See how wonk wonky it is? Let me just pull oh, it out woo. a little bit. Oh, Give that a stretch. Yeah. yeah, it's got lots of stretch. But see how wonky these sides are? It's because we sewed with curves that had no seam allowance in them. This is what you're supposed to expect. What, and that's why she has you make it a little bigger. Now, see, this is just, just needs to be wonked a little bit this way. And there's a lot of give and play in this fabric. So I just give it a tiny bit. And I think I need to between 9 and 19. There we go. So I want to get it down to a 10-inch square. So if yours looks like this when you're sewing it, just think that's the way it's supposed to look. Yeah. Let's okay. see. Is it 9 or 9 and 8 and a half? It is supposed to be. How about your other one? Oh, I mean 10. Yes, 10. Okay. We want a 10-inch finished square. So... I'm making sure, I'm just laying it down on my mat. Here is one line and here's my next 10. So I'm gonna make sure I'm over it, which I am in all four sides. So I'm down these two lines and I'm across these two lines. We could use it, yeah, let's do the Marcelli mat. It's even easier to see it. It is. Much easier. easier so count. here's my 10 inch square up block. So I just need to make sure that I cover that. Look at that. So see, if it's fully covered, Sweet. then I can come and trim on top of it. Mm -hmm. Here's the sides line. Here's the red. So I'm gonna follow the red. This red line is the 10, matches the 10 underneath it. And now you don't have to disturb your fabric, you just turn. And then this 10, the red lines are my outside squares. So I'm just putting my ruler on the red line. Sweet. Oh, this is nice Isn't choice. Isn't that nice? I, I can see why you love this thing. I do love it. You don't have to keep picking up your fabric and disturbing it. And you're going to see right? how square this gets, and you're going to be like, oh, oh wow, better. that's so awesome. <laughs> room for error. There is some room for error. Mm, um, and then we end up that. with our nice square lock. I know. So now we have two that we can Those put together. Those will probably end up going point to point. So these will right? go, yep, these will go like this. And my pillow is halfway done. Oh, sweet. All right, I wanted to show you a couple more things. What are we doing? Time. Oh, my gosh, this is a long time. That's, you had a lot of information. When you prepare, you could go for a long time. <laughs> I, I did want to show. Well, maybe we should show that tomorrow. We can. All right, we'll show it tomorrow. So, um, I guess that's it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I know. I was going to show you the AccuQuilt equivalent. That could be tomorrow's treat. So, all right, you guys have Stay a great tuned. night. We'll see you tomorrow at 3.